Hi everybody, welcome back. We're in Jeremy Duff's Elements of New Testament Greek. In chapter 9, we're in the practice exercises, practice 9.3, looking at some of these pronouns and so on. Let's get straight into it. I've got three examples here for you. Uh, one Greek into English first. Here goes. Her mes episteusamen ala su uk ekousas. Her mes episteusamen ala su uk ekousas. Let's go from the top and just find the verb as we normally do. And here's the verb, episteusamen. Press pause for a second and see if you can figure out what this is doing. Well done for pressing pause, as I hope you did. There's the stem, remember, from pistuo, which means I believe. Very good. And then we notice next we've got epsilon augment sigma suffix, which tells us the tense. The tense is aorist. So it's an aorist of pistuo, meaning I believe. So it's I believed. But then we need to check out the ending. Check out the ending. So think about um, luo, our paradigm verb. Elusa, elusas, elusen. Elusamen, elusata, elusan, elusamen is the first person plural. So it's the first person plural, aorist, indicative, active of pistua, I believe, meaning we, plural, believed. Probably translate that into an English past tense. So we believed. Now what do we do next? Well, um, you've got ala, which is a nice chunky conjunction, but, um, and... Uh, we're going to come back to this pronoun here uh, in a few moments when we have done the next verb here, because I want to just uh, talk about the pronouns briefly at the end. Let's translate this verb. And generally, this is a good idea. If you get stuck and tangled up with the sentence, you're not sure what to do, well, at least find the verbs. Um, and if you can't translate the whole of one clause easily straight away, just find the next verb and work on that. You might find that, that sheds a bit of light on things. So, ekousas, uh, that comes from akuo which uh, means I hear or I listen, think acoustic to do with sound, so I hear or I listen. Bit of a curveball there because the epsilon augment has combined with the alpha to, to give you the eta, so ercusas, and then you've got the sigma suffix indicating that this also is an aorist. So it's aorist, but what person and what number is it? Well, back to luo, elusa, elusas. Elusen. This is second singular. So it's you singular. I'll get rid of some of this. You singular. Pop that in just to remind you. Uh, extra points in an exam, though that's not what you're interested in. You're interested in understanding the text. Uh, you heard or listened. Okay. So now what have we got in the sentence? Well, Going from the top to begin with, we've got this first person plural pronoun from ego, eme, emu, emoi, hermes. So it's the uh, nominative plural pronoun, which means we. Well, why would you want that? Because we've already got we in we believed. Well, there's only one reason why you use a nominative pronoun in this kind of way, a, a first person pronoun, um, and it's to emphasise the we. We believed to contrast we, the subject, with something else, which of course then makes sense of the logic of the sentence. We believed, hemes episteusamen, ala, but by contrast, su, second person nominative singular plural, you, uk, ekusas, not heard or listened. So we need to jiggle that around a little bit to make it make sense in English. But you did not hear or listen. You see what we've done there. Now, it's interesting, um, uh, the, the two possible ways in which you could take this, we believed but you did not listen, or we believed but you did not hear. I'm guessing, uh, I'm not guessing, I mean, this is just the way it is. Um, don't guess at Greek. Um, it's possible that uh, abstractly this could be, could mean either of these. Um, and of course, the, the difference in meaning would be quite significant because saying you did not listen places the blame on the you. We all believe, but you weren't paying attention. Whereas this doesn't place any blame, so to speak, on the person who's being addressed. 
you didn't hear. So we believed something that we heard, but you didn't hear. Perhaps you didn't get a chance to. Um, Duff, in his answers, plumps for you did not listen, which of course is fine. Um, but but uh, he will be aware, and you should be as well, that akuo can mean I hear as well as I listen. So we believed, we believed, but you, in contrast, did not hear or listen. Just notice in passing with this that this is one of those instances where you do actually get more from the Greek than you can easily render into English. In English, there isn't, there aren't so many uh, flexible and subtle ways of highlighting this kind of emphasis because we need to have the pronoun we and the pronoun you anyway when we have the verb because the verb in English doesn't contain the pronoun within it. So by um, allowing us to use emphatic pronouns in this way, Greek allows us to convey a sense which can be conveyed and understood in English but only somewhat more clunkily or woodenly. Greek is elegant in this sense. So you're really trying to understand the text. You're trying to understand that, yes, it's we who believe in contrast to you who did not hear or did not listen. OK, enough of that. Number three is uh, number five now. Let's have a look at this. Save yourself. Save yourself. So where's the verb here? I've changed colour, otherwise we're going to get confused. All this red everywhere. The verb obviously is right here. Save, which is very straightforward. It comes from sozo. But we want to have the imperative because we're issuing an instruction save yourself so we want the um, uh, imperative singular yourself and we have to decide whether we want the present or the aorist you know the imperatives uh, lue, luete for the present singular and plural luson lusate for the aorist singular and plural so it's either so there or so well the sigma is can kind of combine with the the z, uh, zeta so it's going to be so son uh so so there or so son if you want present or aorist which of these is it going to be well the present tense generally uh in the imperative mood is generally used to indicate uh, an action which is ongoing in some way or frequentative or happens again and again or is extended in time whereas the aorist is used when you don't particularly want to indicate these things so in view of the fact that save yourself probably doesn't refer to an action that's extended through time you probably don't want to use the present which leaves you with the aorist probably so so son would make more sense in this instance so so son save and then here's where the money is of course yourself well this is what we've been looking at in this chapter yourself you want the second person singular reflexive pronoun yourself and of course that is um set out set out but then you decline that in the usual way like agathos so that gives you not set out but set out because it's the object and it's singular so set out on. So son set now, ton. Save yourself. Save yourself. Excellent. Right, very good. And then finally, number six. Let's switch colours again. Let's go back to red because we're not going to get confused down here. I will proclaim your deeds. I will proclaim your deeds. Well, I will proclaim. There's the verbal phrase. I will proclaim. So proclaim as distinct from preach the gospel, which is euangelizomai. Proclaim. You want the verb keruso, keruso, and it's in the singular first person, but it's future. So you want the extra sigma suffix in there, which means that the double sigma that you've got already turns into. Remember what it turns into? Yeah, of course you do. It turns into a, 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 a xi. What am I doing? Putting sigmas down there. So I will proclaim is care. And then we want the ending, and you know, future endings in the indicative are the same as in the present. So, keruxo, I will proclaim. Now, how do we do this? Your deeds. Well, 
if you're trying to translate something possessive, the most common way is just to use the appropriate pronoun and think of this as the deeds of you. Don't think of it as try and find a word for your, that will give you the less common way of doing it, even if you do get it right. But think the deeds of you. And how do we do that? Well, that's fairly straightforward then. Deeds or works is ta erga, the deeds or the works. And what's the second person plural genitive pronoun? Well, it's from su, su se su soy, humes, humas, who moan. So, keruxo taega humon. I will proclaim your deeds. There's some examples for you from there in Duff's book, chapter 9, section 9.3. Do all the rest of the exercises when you have a moment, and then we'll move on in the next video and look at the next section, and before long we'll be at the end of this chapter. Keep going 20 minutes a day or 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week, and we'll have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. Okay, God bless, and bye for now.